Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian Martin, a.k.a. The Biz. I just wanted to take this time out time to uh, give a special tribute and shout out. Normally, I would talk about some upcoming things that's coming up. Um, right now, it's not about the videos. Right now, it's not talking about any skits. I just wanted to take this time out time for a one of the most awesome person I can proudly say that it's like one of my heroes, my childhood heroes. Uh, she is like an auntie to me. Hell, she is an auntie to me. And uh, her name is Cornelia Mason, or I simply call her my Auntie Connie. And um, I wanted to take this time out and uh, wanted to uh, share some awesome moments with uh, my auntie. And the one thing I have to say is my auntie was an amazing woman, such an amazing woman. The one thing that she always showed me as a child was two things, and that is laughter and love. And um, I can proudly say that because I remember back when I was a kid, I forget kid, back when I was a baby, uh, Auntie Connie always looked after me. She always made me laugh, and she always uh, treated me like I was one of her own. And um, if there's anything I could share with Auntie is that she always made me laugh, and I always made her laugh. And one of the moments that I will share, the times when I made her laugh, um, I know my mom could vouch for this. Um, Auntie Connie used to watch me as a child she used to babysit me and the most funniest thing was that um, I had this robot I forgot the name of the robot but I had this robot when I was a little kid and it walked it talked it did it it did everything it was like any toy that a kid could ever dreamed of it was an amazing robot and the funniest thing about it was, one day when I went to Auntie Connie's house, I fed it cereal. Yeah, I fed it Frosted Flakes, because I felt, as a kid, I thought I felt that was so real, you know? It was like my buddy. It was like my Chucky, my buddy. And um, I remember my, <laughs> I remember Auntie calling mom at work, and she stared at me. Auntie stared at me. And then she called Ma Duke on the phone and she said this, Sylvia, girl, you ain't gonna believe this. What's wrong, Connie? What's going on? Sylvia, you remember that robot you got, Brian? Yes. You remember it used to walk in and it talked, right? Yes, well, I spent about $100 on that robot. Yeah, it doesn't do that anymore. What? What? What do you mean it doesn't do that anymore? Yeah, um, Brian fed his cereal. What? Yeah, uh, Brian fed his cereal. And now he's looking at it, and he's looking at me all sad and pitiful, wanting to know why the robot ain't working no more. Girl, I just had to tell you. And um, <clears throat> to that moment, had to be one of the most funniest moments to uh, Auntie Connie at the time. And now I can laugh about it. Mom, as mad as she was because she spent $100 on that robot, she could proudly, she could look back and laugh and say, you, you were some type of kid, Brian. <laughs> but, um... Also, um, there's so many awesome memories I could share because, you know, when I think of Auntie Connie, you know, like I said, she's a real, she's like a piece of my heart. And if I could also share this moment is when she used to watch me, Stephanie, and Laura. There used to be times when we shared TV. And... 
I know Auntie Connie, sh this, this always made her laugh. And I know maybe, just maybe Stephanie might remember this, but we used to share TV time. Anytime when we were at Auntie Connie's house, we used to share TV time. Stephanie was a slick little girl because she would let me and Laura watch whatever we want to watch. When it's her time to watch TV, her favorite show, Full House, I couldn't stand it as a kid. I hated the show, and and the minute the song start, Auntie Connie was sniggle because I went the minute it goes ah. Now listen, Brian, it's Stephanie's time to watch TV. I'm like, I, w I wanted to say at the time, damn, damn, damn. I wanted to say that when I was a kid. Uh, you know, those were the damn moments. I was such a degenerate because all I would think is, when is Stephanie's mom going to pick her up? I want to watch this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, um, that that was a funny moment. Also, Laura, known for sucking her thumb all the time, and Auntie Connie always teased, "I'm gonna put some salt in that thumb and let's see if you still suck it." And uh, one thing also was that anytime with Auntie Connie, she was so awesome because whatever we watch, she get into it. And the cartoons we watch, even when times when we used to watch Freakazoid and Tiny Toons and and the Animaniacs and all types of cartoons you could think of that was hot at the time. I just kind of would always make us laugh because one of her favorite catchphrases, she'd be like, look at that boy, he look nuttier than a fruitcake. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she always made us laugh, man. And, but there's also this that I always made Auntie Connie laugh and her and I could share this moment, my mom could share this moment, is that, um, Many, many of the youth, young people today might not know this show, but a lot of people, uh, who knows, I might be surprised. Like, a lot of the grown folks would definitely know this show, and this show was called In the Heat of the Night. And um, every time when the show go on, it, it used to come on TNT at the time. And, um, and this even goes back to when I was a little kid. I would come in for the song intro, and then when they play In the Heat of the Night, I had to kind of be like, Brian, In the Heat of the Night is on, and I would slide to a room, socks and all, slide to a room like I'm like I'm a Puerto Rican Tom Cruise, slide to a room, and then we both start singing In the Heat of the Night, and then at the end of the song, when he says, In the Heat of the Night, I would walk away, <laughs> and Auntie Connie would be like, "You are, you are a piece of work. You, you just come in, you sing the song, and then you just leave." I'm like, Auntie Connie, I'm gonna go back and watch Looney Tunes. I just came for the song. Bye. Another thing that Auntie Connie also had jokes on me about was that even as a kid through a teen, she would always be like, Brian Mark. Brian Martin, let me ask you something. Yeah, auntie. What's up with you with all these Latina girls? I'd be like, come on, auntie. She was like, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I mean, I have yet to see you with a girl with brown sugar. You like them Latina living to be a loca girl. I'd be like, well, auntie, I am half Spanish. And she was like, yeah, and you also have black too. You better remember that other half. You better find somebody with that other half. That have never to be a low car. <laughs> and she always, <laughs> and she always, always had jokes on me with that. And she was like, Brian, you better not get mad with that. <laughs> You're English, Brian, English. <laughs> I had some awesome memories with her, and I know many people that know Connie Mason, that's been around Connie Mason, could smile about some awesome memories that they shared. She was just an amazing woman and I had to thank her for being a part of my life. And I always say this and I say this behind her back 
and in front of her. And that is this, I will always consider her a piece of my heart. She will always be a hero to me uh, because the fact is I always say this all the time to everybody when they say, you know what? What makes Brian, you know, I want to get to know Brian. And I tell him honestly that, you know, if it wasn't for God himself first, um, my great grandfather, Worth Martin, God rest his soul in heaven. My mom, Sylvia Martin, Connie Mason, Uncle Mike, I wouldn't be who I am today. I think a guy like Chef Boyardee, he, he just took a big pot. He put a little piece of his, he put a piece of him in the pot. He put a piece of mom, mom's character and strong backbone and everything that represents Sylvia Martin in the pot. Then he puts uh, my great grandfather's heart and a piece of him in the pot. He puts Michael Kevin Martin, my uncle. He put his charisma in the pot and then throw Auntie Connie's laughter and love in the pot. Stir it up real nice and well. Puts it in the oven and then when it comes out, hot bake Brian Martin and that's how it is so yeah there goes your ingredients how to make Brian Martin I just named it right there those figures made me who I am today and I never forget about them even when I became a teenager I always took the time for Auntie Connie even though she was uh, my childhood babysitter and when I became a teenager, I did not forget about her. I would always stop by and spend time with her and Tony and Shamira. And I remember those times when my buddies back in the day, uh, Carlos, Christian, uh, Jeremy, Joe, Shiva, uh, Lazar, Jose, Big David, um, many goes on in the list of the people, of the guys I hung out with. They will always fight me about this one thing, and that was that each and every moment and time, I always shared it with Auntie Connie and the twins, and they will fight me outside. And they never knew about, um, I really never talked about it till now. This is how it used to go down. We would play baseball, or we would play basketball, and then I would say, okay, guys, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go uh, spend some time with Auntie Connie and Tony Shamira. And he'd be like, yo, man, come on, man. We were just playing a good game, man. You just seen them yesterday. You just seen them a couple days ago. Why you not go over there, man? Come on, kick it with us. I'm like, hey, you got a problem? You know, and, and, and it was the same thing with, with Yazzie, Justin, and Jessica as my younger brothers and sisters. And with Tony Shamir and Auntie Connie, I always felt like, you know, I will never forget the ones that were there for me. And, you know, that's where my heart was. So anytime when somebody, like my buddies at the time, when they had a problem, I would, I'd be on some fight mode where I'd be like, you got a problem? Is there a problem? You have a problem with me going upstairs to the third floor and spend time with my nephew and niece and my auntie, do you have a problem? Nah, nah, B. Do what you do. I thought so. I'll see you later. And I used to be the biggest heel. I used to have the guys want to just say, you know, sometimes I can't stand that jerk. But he's our boy. <laughs> so, yeah, but, um, you know, I, I was always happily to spend time with Tony Shamira and make them laugh. And always took the time for Connie Mason as well. She always called me by this nickname when I was a baby, and she always called me her little poopy. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's only two people that I will allow in my life, as, as grown as I am, I will always let Auntie Connie call me poopy. Anybody else that calls me poopy or boo-boo, I will bust you in your face. You hear me? I will break your jaw. I will find you. And I know where you live. I can see you right now. You're watching me and you're eating. And you're eating. And and tell the cat to get off the computer. You loser. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I just want to keep it real that Auntie Connie was always uh, my sweetheart. And um, the one thing I always felt, when I left and went to Midtown, it wasn't to fade away, no. When I left and went to Midtown, there was one thing in my mind, and that was to make 
um, everybody proud. My mom, my auntie, the people in my life that's in here, I want to make them proud. I really hope that they were proud. And I really hope that Auntie Connie was proud. For everything I accomplished at Toys R Us Times Square, New York, to AMC Empire 25 and Radio City Music Hall, and not to mention, I gotta bring this up because they're part of my family, they are my family too, CBBC and Impact. You know, for every accomplishment and everything I have done, met new friends along the way, um, created new friends, created the band, and new family too. Everything that I've done, you know, the one thing I really hoped in the back of my mind, as much as I was living it up, I just hoped that they were proud. And I was hope, I always hoped that the kind was proud. And time by time, I would try to visit her. Time by time, I would visit to see how she was doing, and Auntie Connie always called me, and it was always great to hear her voice, and um, I just wanted to get that out. It's rare for me to actually take the time out time and say how I truly feel about somebody special in my life, and um, I wanted to take this time out time to say to uh, Connie Mason, I just wanted to say this to Auntie Connie, I love you, and you're the world to me, and I hope you get better soon.